Atonement is a really good example of how uh, Joe Wright's never going to compromise on sometimes the most ridiculously risky, I'd say, uh, gambles, artistic gambles, uh, in order to maintain the absolute specificity of his vision. You know, Atonement as a novel may have broad historical sweep. You might go from the beaches uh, at Dunkirk to manor houses in the countryside to London during the war. I mean, there's just incredible scope and scale, and it crosses decades of storytelling, obviously. Uh, and it's an unbelievably complicated plot. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's all about interiority and about imagination. It's about what didn't happen. It's about what you kind of wish happened. And it's about how art, by creating a false veneer of memory and narrative and storytelling and emotion, actually gives you the sense that you can continue with some kind of truth still left in, in, inside yourself as you go through all these horrible experiences. And again, uh, the rule book says audiences are going to hate that stuff. They don't like to be tricked. They don't like to see things that aren't real and then be told, mm, maybe that wasn't real. Yeah, in movies, when you see it, it's supposed to be the truth. And what Joe does is he says, no, what you're seeing is a different kind of truth. It's not fact. It's the truth that's created by great storytelling. And so often when filmmakers who aren't as good as Joe attempt to do that, audiences just go, oh, you, oh that was easy. You just pulled the rug out, out from under me. I don't, I don't like you so much. And in the case of Atonement, what they said was, whole, you know, wow, you just took me to a whole other level of emotion that I could never have gotten. So by the end of the film, when Vanessa Redgrave is uh, being interviewed by actually Anthony Minghella as the interviewer, and you understand uh, what you've just seen, in a sense, as the product of her both guilt as well as her imagination and her redemption. You've been redeemed along with her. You've just gone on a journey you had no idea you were on. Um, and audiences obviously were incredibly grateful for it. It was one of our most fun uh, nights at the Golden Globes that year because there was a, a strike going on, a writer's strike. So the uh, Hollywood Foreign Press was not allowed to actually put on the Golden Globes Awards. So they were only allowed to go up to a a podium in front of a camera and just read off the winners. There was no ceremony. Uh, so we all gathered at a, at a bungalow at the Chateau Marmont in Hollywood, all the filmmakers, and watched on TV as they just, and the winner of you know, Best Picture is, and then they said Atonement. And it was great. We, I was behind the TV, we took a photograph of everybody as they were watching the television. They just kind of went crazy. You know, it was like, ah, you know, it was really fun. Um, and uh, that's, that's one of my favorite photos uh, from the history of the company.